Many, if not most, of the Texas Radio Hall of Fame inductees started their broadcast careers as youngsters, and Bob Stroop is no exception. In 1973, while still in high school, Bob began working at WNJC, the first NPR affiliate in Mississippi, licensed to Northwest Mississippi Junior College in the city of Senatobia. The following year, he was hired to host afternoons at WSAO, located nearby. Bob soon became chief engineer at the station after acquiring his first glass radio telephone license. While studying at Mississippi State University, Bob did mornings and served as chief engineer at WSSO and WSMU in Starkville while doing contract work in the region. In 1982, he moved to Pensacola, Florida, where as chief engineer, he designed and constructed a new transmitter facility and a 1,400-foot tower for WOWW. Bob arrived in Texas in 1990, hired by Gannett as chief engineer for KKBQ AM and FM. While at KKBQ, Bob designed and constructed three mobile studios, spending many hours engineering live broadcasts. When KKBQ was sold to Chancellor Media, Bob was named Director of Engineering for all of Chancellor Houston stations. Two years later, Clear Channel purchased the stations and Bob became their local Director of Engineering, designing and constructing a 26 studio complex to house the cluster. Bob is currently a Regional Engineering Manager with iHeart, responsible for engineering in the Houston and Beaumont markets. Please join me in welcoming Bob Stroop to the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. Wow. You know, being an engineer, I don't get to speak in front of the public very much anymore. <laughs> So if I seem a little nervous, uh, it is, was really an unexpected honor. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, the first I learned that I was actually uh, nominated uh, for the Texas Radio Hall of Fame uh, was from uh, Big Frank Edwards down in Corpus Christi, uh, who works for IR down there. And he said, I voted for you. I said, well, thank you very much. <laughs> So uh, it was, uh, in fact, I'm having to pinch myself to make sure I'm not in a dream right now. Uh, one of the things that, uh, when I do speak, is I like to point out that everybody had to have mentors and that everybody had to have people who gave them breaks along the way. And so I would like to thank some of those people. You probably won't know a lot of the names, but uh, they, without them, I wouldn't be here today, I can tell you that. So uh, first, my uncle, Kenneth Stroop, who was an amateur radio operator and uh, encouraged me to get my amateur radio license and uh, develop an interest in electronics. Uh, then there was Paul Copeland. Uh, they mentioned uh, Paul was uh, at uh, WNJC at Northwest Mississippi Junior College. He was a chief engineer there. And he helped me get my uh, third class license, which was required at the time, uh, to be on the air to operate the transmitter. And then also to, uh, he uh, helped me get my first class radio telephone license while I was in high school. Then there was Roger Webb who hired me at WSAO to do afternoons. Uh, at afternoons on the air in high school, was it was really a blast. And then uh, another guy along the way was Roger Webb, or I'm sorry, I mentioned Roger, uh, was uh, Bob Bogan who was another great mentor at that time. Uh, then I ventured off into television for just a little while before I went to college. Uh, Bob Taylor was a chief engineer at WABG TV in Greenwood, Mississippi, uh, for a number of years, and um, he allowed me to get some expertise in that, also with AM directional antennas, uh, which helped me greatly in my career later on. Uh, Bob also taught me how to drink beer, uh, <laughs> although I did have some experience in that before I met Bob, just a little bit. And then Joe Phillips, who hired me when I was in Mississippi State, who worked at WSSO, I was. Uh, uh, hoping to uh, walk in the station one day, help me get weekends, and suddenly I was doing mornings six days a week. So that was that was a blast. And then later, I mentioned I was at WOWW in Pensacola. Another, I had a friend, uh, John Weeks, also known as Crystal Kelly, was working there. I visited him, met the manager, a guy named Jim Colley, and he hired me to be uh, chief engineer at, at uh, Well 107 in Pensacola. Uh, in 1982, uh, worked with Sammy George, who Colonial Broadcasting 
Uh, also uh, in Pensacola, a guy named Dave Kiker, who was a contract engineer uh, and worked for stations there. And uh, uh, Dave, we constructed a couple of AM directional antennas while well, we were there and heard, you know, technical stuff, but uh, it was a wonderful time. And Dave was also a certified flight instructor, so I got my private pilots and uh, license and instrument rating while we lived in Pensacola. And then uh, another out of the blue thing, just out of the blue, I heard from a friend that KKBQ in 1990 was looking for chief engineer. I submitted my resume, and the next thing I know, I was sitting in front of the GM Alberti Law and I uh, shaking hands with him and I was uh, Chief Engineer at KKBQ. That was when John Lambert was doing mornings uh, and uh, John Trapane was working promotions and uh, it was uh, a crazy, crazy time. Mark was there, of course, Mark Landis. And it was just a crazy, crazy time. And it, I had a tiger by the tail because they did so much stuff, including uh, club broadcast and all. It was a, a definite challenge. Um, and then uh, later, uh, when they changed formats to the country and Don Trout came in as uh, general manager, he and I became really good friends, so I constructed the mobile studios, and, and uh, it was just, Gannett was a wonderful company to work for. And now, uh, Eddie Martini, who is the current, uh, and has been for like 13 years, the uh, market president for iHeart in Houston, uh, he's a real people person, and he has taught me a lot about people and that's what this business is it's all about the people that's one of the reasons we're we're all in this business is because we get to hang out with a lot of great people and interesting people uh thanks to doug and uh, adam at the texas radio hall of fame for you know helping out and uh, assisting me because it, it it's a real surprise i mean it's just uh crazy crazy uh, and last but not least, I'd like to thank my wife, Ella. Uh, I was doing broadcast engineering in 1978 when we met. And the radio station, I didn't have a pager then, but the radio station would call her apartment looking for me when something went wrong. So she kind of knew what she was getting to, although she endured years and years of you know, late night, all hours calls from radio transmitter, remote control systems, or people uh, at three in the morning that the club broadcast wasn't working for some reason or another. So uh, thank you, Ella, for enduring uh, all of that uh, during my career. Uh, again, we need mentors along the way. And thank you so much. Thank you for everybody who voted for me for the Texas Radio Hall of Fame. It is a great honor. Thank you.